Hi, my name is Cora May, and today I'm talking to you guys about how to heal Veximus inside of Alcathar Academy. This boss can definitely be a menace, especially on Tyrannical. It's definitely a scary boss inside of what is relatively an easy dungeon. It requires a lot of burst healing in order to get through mana bombs. You also have to watch out for overlaps between the arcane fissure and the mana bombs, and it's hard to do if your group is spreading out. Now, before I get into this, I do want to point something out. I'm going to be showing you guys a strategy where you have everybody just stay stacked and move around the, like, the room as a group to keep getting like so that it's easy for an evoker to heal. So I highly suggest that if you are doing keys with a coordinated group or just like a group that's in voice or people that are willing to listen, you just ask them to, hey, could we just move around the group and drop puddles instead of running out? Like people's instinct on this boss is, oh, I have the mana bomb, so they're like standing right here. They're like, I'm gonna go drop it off the edge of the room. The ring is back here is like, yeah, let me go drop it off somewhere that's not in the way. And this kind of creates a problem for you as an evoker healer because like then your only default healing that you can maybe hit them with is spirit bloom which can also be faulty people are like running around too much and they're out of range and or you just have to rely on lifeline healing so if you do if you are in a pug like that and you're doing a key like that like the best thing you can usually do is just to pre-spirit bloom the mana bombs or to be having echoes on everybody lifeline everyone and have a four stack of living flame um ready to go so that that hits everyone and you're basically just like going back and forth between spirit bloom and doing life bind for sack leaping flame healing in order to get you through that for it embrace healing good but on a key this high it's not going to be enough so we definitely need to stack and the main idea behind stacking is i've been using primarily a verdant embrace into temporal anomaly for echoes everyone and echoing the dream breath on everyone to top them before the final tick okay so now that i've talked about a little bit of the premise of it let's get into it and let me mute myself. <laughs> I always forget to turn on the sound. I just updated to Windows 11. Where is the sound thing? Here it is. Thank you. Okay. So right now we're pulling the boss. As you see, we're pulling two forgers on pull. So these are going to be leaping around, doing a tiny bit of damage to us. And they're also going to be bursting. Um, I think when some of the mana bombs go off later. We're getting ready for the first set of mana bombs to go out. I'm making sure I'm dispelling right now. And the first set of mana bombs that goes out is always where I set up my first stasis. That's because out of the first mana bombs, you get a fissure right into a mana bomb. So this is an overlap, but it's not like a hard overlap. It's like an easy, like fissure into mana bombs is always the easy overlap. The scary overlap is whenever you get mana bombs into fissure because the, dam the time between the damage is a lot smaller compared to when you get fissure into mana bombs. The timestamp that you want to look out for that to happen is around 2 minutes and 50 seconds where you're going to get the bad overlap. The other overlaps are a lot easier to deal with. However, it's still good to set up your stasis at least somewhere on the fight early on, and so I always choose to do it just on this first one. So as you can see, I already Verdant Embrace someone, so I have my Call of Acera buff. I have four Leaping Flame stacks if I need them. I've activated my stasis, and I've also Temporal anomaly everyone. So I have full Echoes out, I have the Call of Acera buff, and all of my DPS are stacked up like this, and I've started casting my Dream Breath. Admittedly, this first Dream Breath I do do a bit too early. Like, I always I tend to like jump the gun on the first Mon Bong, so I'm just like watching the timer, and the timer is always not exactly correct <laughs> on when it's going to come out. But we get through this one just fine. So I'm just going to full charge the dream breath and so ideally I would have held on to it like an extra second so I get the final ticks so everyone's topped going into taking damage here. And I end up leaving like using my leaving flame charges to get them top before that final tick there so it ends up being fine. So I have two charges in my stasis right now. The first one is dream breath. The second one is one leaping one living flame. It does not throw the, the leaping flames anymore. So I still have one more charge of my stasis left, even though my weak word doesn't show that. And I'm going to spirit bloom here to top us going into this arcane fissure we're about to get. I need to dispel my tank. There we go. And then right now I'm just putting out echoes. Normally out of the fissure, I'm just going to rely on some golden hour healing and topping us a tiny bit going into the next mana bomb. So there we go, I reversion everyone. These forwarders are running around and the first one just died and the second one is getting close to dying while this um, mana bomb is going to go off and he's casting mana bombs right now. As you can see, so I'm getting some leaping flame stacks. I'm immediately using the leaping flame stacks to try and top us if I can. Um, unfortunately here, I do not have a, another verdant embrace here and so I use my call of a sir to use that leaping flames to order in order to like top us. So, my stasis will be a little bit weaker, but since there's a Dream Breath and a Spear Bloom in there, I'm confident that it's going to be enough to get us through this. Even though we have the Bursting Stacks, it's kind of spooky because we're taking like that little bit of extra damage. 
I probably detonated it a second too early and I get lower here than I needed to. So looking back at it, I would have held on to that for another second. We clear thundering. And now I'm getting ready for the next mana bombs. So for this mana bombs, I don't have a four leaping flame stacks. I don't have my dream breath up. So I'm probably going to just be relying on spirit blooming here in order to top us. Yep, there we go. So I'm casting a spirit bloom. Not my, my preferred method of healing, but it works whenever you need to do it. And I get them pretty close to topped except for our rogue here. And that's usually what I'm scared about with a spirit bloom. Is it some like some people won't get top by just with little bit crits or not? <laughs> um, and that's why I don't necessarily like doing it. And if I do it, I at least like to have the five leaping flame stacks paired with it. In between, you're just trying to keep up as many reversions and stuff as possible. Right now we're getting another pushback and we're not getting monobombs for like five seconds until like five seconds after it. So this is not even an overlap. It's just like arcane fissure, make sure I'm gonna to top everyone and then going into the next monobombs. It's the next arcane fissure that I need to be worrying about. So right here, just topping everyone, dispelling people, putting out my echoes. Or I should say reversions. I use those echoes for reversions. And right here, I should be, I am prepping for the next um, mana bomb. So as you can see, I just cast Verda Embrace on my Moonkin. If you're ever wondering what I'm doing, I have an action tracker right here. It's a little bit hard to follow. So I just Verda Embraced him. So I just now got my Call of a Sarah buff. Then I need to Temporal Anomaly and start charging up my Dream Breath for this mana bomb that he is casting. So Temporal Anomaly. I take a step back to make sure I'm able to hit my Moonkin. If, if he had the mana bombs here, I guarantee he would have set forward because he's always conscious of that kind of thing. Like use DPS who know, no, you know what I mean? They want to live, <laughs> but he doesn't get it. So I just point it towards my melee, detonate it right away, eat a, eat a bomb right before, but it's fine. We live that. The other thing you want to look out for here is that um, it's really hard on this fight for you to use TD on anyone except the tank, depending on what the tank is. So you can't use like time dial as like a free defensive, but my pro paladin is using sack, like sack on CD as much as he can, especially on our enhanced shaman, because he's usually pretty scared. The rogue has faint for everyone. He can bear everyone. I'm usually fine on everyone, but he's the one that usually doesn't have a defensive for every single one. Okay, so coming up, we have mana bombs in five seconds. So I do not have my dream breath here. I do have stasis coming up, so this is probably where I'm going to store my stasis. And I'm probably just going to Spirit Bloom this one. I also could have pre-Fire Breath that, this. That would have been good. I'm not exactly sure when it came up. I wasn't paying that much attention. So here, I burn it Embrace, and I tip the scales of Spirit Bloom, actually. I think I was a little bit late to notice what was going on, and I didn't uh, start pre-casting Spirit Bloom early enough, but that's what the tip the scales is for, is to save it for um, a moment when you aren't playing so well. <laughs> so this stasis is not, like, the absolute best, but... It is a stasis, you know, it's just basically using it when I can. It's going to be useful for healing the next mana bombs, and then I won't have to dream breath if I don't want to. Right now we're getting another mana bomb, and then right now, okay, so it's the next arcane fissure that I'm scared of, basically. Right now we're getting this mana bomb. We're spreading out. I press my stasis. Again, I think I pressed it a bit too early. The thing is, I always tend to press stasis like a tiny bit too early because I'm worried that like all the spells aren't going to reach. It's a bit harder to gauge. And then that means I'm not topped going into this last tick, which is a little bit bad. Oh, I end up using a leaping flame charge. I was actually, I did help myself. Okay, very good. <laughs> so I do get to live there. Really important that everyone is as topped as possible on the key this high going into that final tick because it hits so hard. I use the Spirit Bloom there to top us before the next mob that comes out. So coming now is going to be the overlap. So what happened here is you don't always get this overlap. Um, sometimes like you, depending on if you, some people are like, oh, you put a ball in here, you don't put a ball in there. Sometimes even if you don't put a ball in, you won't get the overlap. The past two academies we did before this, we didn't get an overlap even though we didn't let a ball in and this one we did. And so I got a little bit too comfortable. I wasn't expecting the overlap here. And it happened, and you're going to see uh, an end up dying. Pretty sure I'm the only one that dies, though. So I just think this is going to be a mana bombs. I'm not, like, paying enough attention to the fact that it is going to do a knockback here, and that's on me. And the mistake I make is that normally, whenever we have the overlap, what you want to do is you want to Emerald Communion it. I'm usually saving Emerald Communion. But what I end up doing is I end up doing my regular, like, Burden Embrace into casting a Temporal Anomaly, 
And this is where I realize that we are getting the overlap. And so instead of doing that, I'm just going to press Zephyr and die, I'm pretty sure. Because usually I usually would Zephyr, TA, BE, and then just Emerald Communion through it. But I realized too late what was happening. So I TA, I Zephyr, instead of doing like a Dream Breath here. And then I die. Everybody else lives though, so it's fine. And I get Battle Res here. But yeah, normally the very best thing that you can do for that overlap always around 250 is to press Zephyr and just use Emerald Communion for it because that's like one of the few ways you will be able to heal it. I also pressed Rewind there. I didn't mention that. So I Zephyred and instead of Dream Breathing, I pressed Rewind, but that wasn't enough to save me. Because um, yeah, I didn't have any DR. I didn't have the extra health that I usually get from when I press Emerald Communion to live that. I didn't have a way to top myself. And I didn't have uh, this up when I died, but now it is up. Okay, so the next one I am probably just going to Emerald Communion because it's towards the end of the fight. That was definitely a misplay on my part. Yeah, and then I just end up Emerald Communioning this one. And we are fine, we are easy peasy, and we get through the fight. And then just, you know, just a dream breath of a good measure. <laughs> I guess I don't even know why I cast that. I should just DPS and uh, this one might take. Anyways, I hope you learned something. Thank you so, so much for watching, and good luck the next time you pull Vexmas.